If you're watching this video, you probably came hoping to render a traditional markdown table in a message sent through Slack's APIs. Sadly, Slack doesn't support the traditional markdown table syntax, but if you're willing to be flexible, we can come pretty close. In this video, we'll demonstrate a few creative workarounds to rendering a table in Slack, including using basic block kit layouts, as well as using some server-side code to render an ASCII table. I'll be referencing some code examples in this blog post, and you can find that link in the video description below. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, let's take a second and really define what it is that we're trying to achieve in traditional Markdown. So as you probably already know, Slack uses a variation of the Markdown syntax to allow you to format messages for in-app Slack surfaces. Now, what a lot of people want to do is be able to use this traditional markdown table syntax to actually render a, a table inside of a Slack message. So sadly, that's not possible. Um, and the first workaround that we'll talk about is just getting kind of close using different blocks that are provided as a part of block kit. So for the rest of this tutorial, we'll basically assume that we have some data that looks like this. Um, it's not very complicated. So that's also something to keep in mind that the more complex your tabular data, uh, you know, the less possible it may be to approximate what you want in Slack. So the first thing that we'll look at is basically creating a table-like layout um, using a collection of different blocks. And so this is going to be a heading right here to display a heading. Um, and then we have sections, fields, and dividers. And we basically assemble that into something that looks like this. And I'll go ahead and just copy this example. And in this other tab, I've opened Block Kit Builder, which is just this playground where you can explore uh, what these blocks render inside of a Slack application. So we'll walk through this step by step and look at what this looks like. All right, so we have blocks um, and then we have an array that basically contains all of these JSON objects that create the structure of our message. All right, so we've got that header right there. And then here um, we have individual blocks so the block type is section. And then inside of the section, we can provide something called fields, right? And these are basically text fields. And if we're only providing two of them, we can do this really nicely formatted tabular-like layout. So that is one of the biggest limitations with this approach is that it only really works for two columns of data. So if you needed a third column, this isn't gonna work. And say, for example, if I went ahead and just added an additional field here, you can see that that instead of being pulled over there, that's going to begin to stack and just not really look the way we want for a tabular layout. Um, but again, if we have just two columns of data, this is a great and simple way. And honestly, what I would recommend because we get really close here, right? So we use these sections and then we separate them with this divider block, which is just a JSON object with type divider. And that's what essentially creates this horizontal rule. Um, and then we can, uh, you know, include text. Now there is another downside in that we're sort of limited by some of the text that we can include in here. So depending on what you're trying to include, it might not be supported, right? So for Markdown, for example, if we wanted to include an emoji, we could, but including an entirely separate image that we would load from a third party URL isn't supported as far as I'm aware. Um, so again, this is step one and would be rendering, um, you know, just basic blocks to create as close to a tabular layout as we can. And again, the limitations there are really that we can only support displaying uh, two columns of text. Now, the next method is a little bit more flexible, um, but also a little bit more involved. So we'll talk about that next. Okay, so this next tactic involves basically creating an ASCII table. Um, where we're going to just use different characters to construct a table like layout. And then we're going to include that textual table inside of a multi line code block to preserve all of the formatting that we've created. Um, so, this is, in all honesty, a very creative way to get around this. But in my experience, after having played around with it a little bit, it produces a pretty good result. And it's really great too, because there's that inherent limitation on using um, the section and field blocks because they can't accept 
more than two columns. So what this basically does is we're gonna provide our, this create ASCII table function in JavaScript, uh, some JSON data, JSON array. And it's gonna basically loop through, extract some headers and construct for us an ASCII table um, that looks like this, right? So instead of, you know, um, getting markdown formatting, we get something that looks like this with all the new lines. And then we pass that content through to the Slack API wrapped inside of a multi-line code block so that we get something that looks like this. And obviously we could use other texts in here. So if you wanted to have emojis or things like that, you could do that as well. Um, so that's what this looks like. And from here, uh, let's go ahead and actually include this in a Next.js server action. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'll start by just copying this uh, create ASCII table function, and we'll do that. And then I'll hop over into my code editor, and we're just gonna go ahead and we'll paste that in up here uh, since it should just be available there. And then we'll do the same thing with our JSON data. So we'll say const data um, you know, equals, equals the data that we've been using for these other examples. We'll go ahead and save that. And then let's look at how we would actually implement this. So when we wanna actually send the message, the first thing that we're gonna do is call that create ASCII table function, pass in our data to create that table string. Then what we're gonna do is open this multi-line code block using these three backticks and uh, basically drop our table string in there. So I've done that here where, you know, we sort of construct this string and then just replace this table variable with the table string that we just produced using this create ASCII table function. And then um, what we'll do is assemble some blocks that we then pass on through to the Slack API. So here you can see I'm still using my header block and then we just have a section with one field where we're using that code block as a type markdown. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy both of these lines. Um, we'll hop back into VS Code and we'll go down to where I'm actually uh, triggering this workflow and we'll call those things. Um, and so we'll paste those lines in there and that's gonna get us our table string, create us our code block. And then we also need to create the blocks that we're gonna pass through to the Slack API. So we'll hop out here. Here you can see I'm already passing this blocks array and we'll just scroll down real quick and replace that and save it. Okay, so we'll double check our work here. We've imported those two, that at create ASCII table function. We've got data as a variable. We're creating our code block um, after we've created our ASCII table. And then this is how I'm passing this data through. Okay, so now I'm gonna hop back um, into uh, Google Chrome. We'll head out to localhost where I have my um, Slack kit, which is a, a knock series of tools that helps me create Slack integrations. And I'm gonna actually open up my test Slack workspace so that we can see this message come through. Um, and we'll just go ahead and refresh, make sure we're loading our latest and greatest server side code. I'll just step through this. And here you can see an example of this Slack kit component, which helps me do OAuth. Um, you can see I'm already connected there. Um, and then I've already got my uh, channel selected to send this Slack message. So I'll click next. Here we can just see some data about the connection. And then we'll go ahead and just type in test, which doesn't really matter. And then we'll go ahead and trigger that workflow that we just created in VS Code. And boom, we get a really nice looking table that looks like that. So again, a little bit more involved in this method, but definitely more flexible. Obviously we have a little bit more space to work with. So if we had more columns, we could absolutely use the create ASCII table method to use those. Um, so again, the sky's a little bit more the limit with that technique. So it's really up to you on what you choose. Thanks for watching. Hopefully these examples help you format your data in a way that works for your Slack integration. While neither technique is perfect, between using section blocks with fields and rendering an ASCII table in a code block, my hope is that you're closer to your end product than before you started. At NOC, we've put a lot of thought into how we can help developers make Slack integrations for their products. So check out our Slack kit components if you're looking to offload things like OAuth, channel selection, and template management. Thanks for watching, and as always, knock on.